Did we talk about the seas? Yellow sea? The Yellow River goes into what sea? Oh, my God. Really, Mr. Bell, you're going to make me memorize this? Yeah, the Yellow River goes into the Yellow Sea. Oh, God, I hate you. All right, now, what's the sea east of China? Oh, my God, really? I have to memorize the East China Sea? Okay, what's the sea south of the East China Sea? The South China Freaking Sea. How hard is that? All right, done with the seas. Yellow, East China, South China. Rivers, Yellow, Yangtze, and Wei, W-E-I. This is never on maps, and it should be, because as you'll see when we get into the Zhou, the Wei River, the Shang and the Zhou, that's the yellow, right? You saw it, right? The yellow when it goes north. Well, look at this little river here, the Wei, W-E-I. You might want to write that down. Because on the Wei is the most important one of, the most one of the most important cities in early China, Xi'an. Terracotta warrior place, first emperor place, Shen Mausoleum place, Xi'an. It's on the Wei River. And this other city is an important early city, Luoyang. Today it's Zhangzhou in, in Hunan province, those of you know. Uh, so Luoyang. Remember I asked you to find a pattern between Zhou and Han, when you were learning the Dynasty song, remember? A pattern that repeats between Zhou and Han? Huh? Do you, have your, do you have your Bible posted on the inside of your journal? Look at Zhou and Han. They have the same pattern. What is that pattern? Look at their subdivisions. No, the subdivisions within it. They break down into two halves. Western Zhou and? And then Han? Okay, and so check it out. This is why these two are important. Notice this is wave one stuff. Wave one and wave two stuff. One of the most important cities, the western capital, is Xi'an. So it's actually not on the Yellow River. It's actually on the Wei River. This is where the Zhou and the Han had their capitals in the western half. And then in both cases... The capital got attacked, and they moved themselves onto the central plain to Luoyang, and that's the eastern capital, west to east, west to east, Zhou Han, west to east, all right? That's why those two cities are important. Oh, and Mount Tai. Anybody here going on interim with me this semester? We're going to Mount Tai. This is China's most sacred mountain. Confucius climbed it. Emperors climbed it. Over and over through history, China has five sacred mountains. This is the most sacred one. White people don't know anything about it. They all go to the Great Wall and the Terracotta Warriors. I went. I was the only white guy walking. It's a seven-kilometer stairway to heaven, a stone stairwell that goes north-south all the way up one mountain, down the next one, and then up to the top of the second ridge where the emperors perform sacrifices. Amazing. China's sacred mountain, Mount Tai. Um, what else do we have? Tibet. I want you to know Tibet. Right? It's on the Tibetan Plateau. These are the regions. Manchuria here in the chicken's head. Why? Because Shang, Zhou, Wang State, Shen, Han, Peter, Song, Yu, and Ming, Qing. Qing. The Qings are Manchurians. So I told you some nomads come in. They're not nomads, but they're tribal related to earlier nomads. So the Manchurians will come in, and the Qing, and they will conquer. Mongolia is, in, is important because that's the UN coming in, the Mongols. Tibet. So those are regions. We talked about where Hong Kong is, so just notice this map. I'll give you this, this uh, packet online. There's Hong Kong on the sheet down here. I do want you to know that Vietnam is next to China. And here's my last point to make. We are studying China, but, but, but this region, the, re the reason that Vietnam, Korea, and Japan are important to sort of think of as a, a zone, a cultural zone, we call this the East Asian cultural complex because China was the mother culture from which Korea got its Confucianism, its writing system, its Buddhism, its Taoism, its political system from China. And Japan got its Buddhism, Taoism, politics from China. And Vietnam too. So they were all using Chinese writing, Chinese ideas. China was the ancient Greece, for example. Right? The Greeks and Romans, they influenced all of the West. 
China influenced particularly Korea, Japan, and Vietnam. So that's why it's important to know those border states above all. I'm done. Thank you so much.